Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing our tutorial series for Elvenor and we continue uh, doing fighting videos uh, of uh, particular tournaments. So last time around we did what it was, a uh, scrolls tournament and this time around is the next tournament which is Silk. So you can probably go back to uh, the previous video on scrolls and watch the intro if you haven't done so. Uh, I speak a little bit more in depth about, about the general setup, why, why do I uh, do videos the way, uh, the way I do uh, for tournament tutorials. Uh, but here I'll quickly reiterate our setup. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to do 50 provinces of two-star uh, tier uh, or level. So basically, I already done 50 uh, one-star, so I unlocked all 50 for two-star here. And we are going to do one by one uh, provinces from one to 50 for the silk. And as I, as I mentioned before, the first nine provinces, uh, the matchups there are different, so they're easier than the others. So they're not particularly uh, interesting in any case because the losses there are low, uh, so you can do whatever. We'll try to do quickly, uh, go through them. But starting from province 10 and onwards, uh, all the matchups uh, are taken from the same pool. There are, there are just very limited number of matchups that we'll just repeat. Uh, the only differences would be the amount of troops that you have to field, the squad size, uh, for, uh, for the particular star tier, uh, like two stars here, uh, the ratio between your own squad size and enemy squad size is fixed. Uh, but it grows the further down in provinces you go by 5%. Uh, but the further down in tiers you would go like 3 star, 4 star and so on and so forth. The more enemy units for the same number of units that you field. So the fights become more difficult. The win the same tier starting from province number 10. The fights are not more difficult. Uh, all that would happen you would just have more losses. Which is also important because at that stage in the game, that's the end game city, uh, chapter 16, uh, it's mostly all about troop management. Because realistically, uh, if, you, if you do things right, you shouldn't be uh, losing any fights or at least almost no fights. But the question is how many losses would you experience and how much can you go given the uh, losses and troops that you can produce. So again, that's why we are going for uh, two star 50 provinces. Again, the reason for uh, the two star in particular is because that's a lot of KPs. A lot of people just do uh, deep runs up to two stars only, and that makes a lot of sense. And we will be uh, making cutoffs at 20, uh, 30, 40, and 50 provinces and see how much in terms of the losses in squads, uh, did we did we sustain in order to hit those numbers? Uh, again, as I mentioned before, uh, fighting, uh, unlike let's say negotiation in Aspire, is highly specific to a particular level of the city, to a number of uh, ancient wonders and leveling up, as well as a number uh, of expiring buildings with military boosts. So whatever you see here will not necessarily directly uh, be applicable to your cities, even though if you are roughly in the same uh, ballpark uh, of the city development, then that probably would. Uh, but that will give you a general idea of like how would you, how you can you manage your uh, tournament trends in terms of fighting. All right, uh, now again to reiterate where the city is at, that's chapter 16, it's end game. Uh, so the chapter 16 is done. All 
troops are, are unlocked, all troops are three stars, so maximum level. In terms of uh, military ancient wonders, I have here a uh, martial monastery at level, uh, I believe, 22 now. So that's extra 23% or so of health. Uh, I have level 11 to level 12 all other five uh, military related uh, ancient wonders. I mean, uh, military related uh, meaning uh, the ones that provide uh, attack boost or damage boost. And interestingly enough, for a variety of reasons, uh, this is the tournament where I use the least, uh, I believe, yeah, uh, I use the least uh, amount of a temporary military boosts. Uh, literally, the only things what I use right now are, well, Fire Phoenix at level 10, bad, so that's extra 50% of damage for all troops. And a single unleashed unit upgrade, so that means that that's extra 25% to health. Uh, and that's it. So that's quite a bit less than we had in the last cross tournament. The reason for that is that's a relatively easy tournament. Uh, you may not uh, tell uh, that by our results that you will see later on here, because we will experience quite a few losses here, but that's exactly why. So I am managing my uh, military boosters, uh, as in expiring buildings, as well as pet food to a lesser degree. Uh, so I can't unfortunately field everything to every tournament. So this is a relatively easy tournament. So I know I can do uh, relatively well, or at least an acceptable level with minimum military boosts. And that's why I use it here. In that way, even though the total losses would actually be quite higher than maybe in even some other tournaments when I have more military boosts. So there's that. Uh, and I think that's, that's roughly it. Again, general setup, uh, I'll do a cut after t first 20 provinces. Uh, again, the reason is that you will probably see most of there is to see in the first 20 provinces. As I said, the first nine are kind of throwaways, so they would not repeat. Uh, but then you will see probably pretty much all the matchups uh, and all the troops that I field against them in the next provinces from 10 to 20. So from there on, from 21 to 50, you basically see more of the same. Uh, it's more about the reiterating the, the, the matchups, the troops that I filled, uh, more so for you to see what kind of losses you may experience because even if the same matchup, uh, given out of fight and you know, without out of fight, you may have quite different losses because terrains are different uh, at the very least. So sometimes things work uh, really well, sometimes not so well, uh, even for the same matchup and the same uh, enemy and your own lineups. So uh, there's that. And another reason to watch past uh, province number 20 is just to see how many additional losses uh, you will experience uh, if you want to go that far. Uh, well, as well as generally uh, how much time would it take. But uh, realistically, the first 20 is the, where the bulk of the content is. And the 21 to 50, uh, which would probably be in a separate uh, segment. Yeah, uh, watch it if you, if you really want to get uh, in depth uh, and get a feel for the tournament without actually uh, using your own troops for that. So, okay, uh, let's talk in more fighting. So let's jump into our province number one. And uh, again, before that, uh, I'll just briefly mention the troops that we're gonna use. Unlike the last tournament, which had, uh, uh, as I said, the, probably the most varied uh, troop lineups 
at least on my side, uh, what I would use uh, in the tournament. This one is relatively straightforward. The vast majority of fighting what we're going to be doing it would be done with uh, heavy melee. And in particular, uh, in those circumstances, I would prefer to go with Valorian Guards. Valorian Champions in this case, three stars. Uh, that would be the vast majority of fighting done with those units. We'll use a little bit of Elder Trent. Uh, and again, this city is Elven City, so that's that. Uh, and there would be a few matchups where we'd be using Cerberus. Uh, and a few where we would use Rock Princess. And that's generally it. Uh, we may use a few uh, different troops here and there in the first nine uh, provinces, but probably not anything else outside of the first nine. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is. Uh, so let's go. So again, you see, so that's the generally heavy melee setup. We have light light melee uh, against us as well as uh, heavy range, and that's what heavy melee is good against. And here we have more. Um, more heavy range, so that's exactly what you want to use the Valorian Champions for. Uh, and again, just before we go into it, let's look at the uh, setup here. So heavy range, they're excellent against heavy range. They have plus 70% damage against them and 80% damage reduction from them. That is excellent. So they would do really well there. And light melee, not so hot, uh, but they have a damage reduction of 20%. They don't have extra damage boost though. Now, the the important part here, and uh, let's just look at the comparison with the trance, is that part, that's attack range. So we have attack range of two for those units. And we have two movement range and three initiative. Now, if you go and look at trends, they have only one attack range and even worse initiative than those. So that turns out to be very important. While uh, trends are beefy units, they have more health for sure. Uh, but, and yeah, let's look here. So plus 50, minus 80, uh, not too bad against heavy range again. But against light melee, again, not so hot, even though it looks at four star. They have more damage reduction against uh, light melee. But keep in mind that they have to be really, really right in the face of the light melee in order to attack them, because they only have one attack range. Uh, unlike Valorians, who can attack from two range. Uh, even more importantly, so yeah, so against light melee, even though you may think that trans would do better uh, than Valorians, in reality, not really. I mean, they're very comparable to say the least. Uh, I think a lot more would be dependent on the terrain and again, Valorians would have an advantage in the more complicated terrain because of the extra attack range. So another important thing to remember with those setups, so okay, that's what they are good against, uh, but the unit, the counter unit in this tournament would be mages. Uh, so the both Valorians and trends are weak against mages in general. But uh, what you probably will find out, at least in that stage of the game, that Valorians do a lot better against mages. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why. Again, probably attack range has something to do with that, as well as the initiative. Uh, but they do a lot better if there are some uh, mages thrown into the mix. And that's basically uh, will be determining our setup here. So here, well, that's a no-brainer, that's Valorians, because we even have more uh, heavy range here. 
Uh, and we have two country units here, but again, Valorians do well actually against mages. Uh, I mean, not excellent, but they do better than if we would use trans. And there we go. So as you can see, we still experience some loss. Again, remember it's a melee unit, so we will be taking some losses, but uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so that's another in interesting setup. That's actually one of the setups that will repeat after uh, province number 10. So let's briefly talk about that. So there are a few options you can use here. You can go with Valorians again. Uh, but Valorians here is like the vast majority of opponents are light melee. Uh, Valorians are not as great against light melee. Well, at least as they're against uh, heavy range. Uh, so that's actually an counter where I would use trans. Not so much be be because they would do better uh, necessarily than Valorians, but I actually have to use trans somewhere. Uh, the the trends are free with some of the well some I don't remember which uh, ancient wonder actually produces them but yeah I pick up some trends for free I need to use some of them and that's the kind of setups that I'm going to be throwing them into so that's a silk tournament uh, we have no country units that's important because once there would be some mages here as country units. Uh, all of a sudden, trans performance start to deteriorate quite quite a bit. I mean, they would still do okay, but in those setups, Valorians all of a sudden uh, become better. And here, trans will do really well. Now, another option to go here would be Rock Princess. And again, like there are no weaknesses here for them. Uh, they have they're excellent, they're extremely good against light melee. Uh, take a look at that. 90% extra damage, 70% reduction. That is very good. So if we have pure light melee, which we will in some encounters, then frogs are your answer. Uh, yeah, light range, we won't have light range here, so that's not a big deal. Uh, and in this case, we only have one comparable, so heavy range versus heavy range. But the thing with frogs, uh, at least after the nerf that was done uh, quite a while ago now, uh, well, they're excellent against pure light melee. As soon as there's something else in there, uh, they start to melt. And even with one single uh, comparable unit in the mix like that, we have actually performance in this uh, scenario would be generally speaking fairly comparable with uh, just elder trends uh, i mean frogs could do better sometimes uh, because of the terrain because they're ranged unit uh, but by and large on average i know just again for my setup they do comparably well uh, and hence i'm using trends uh, because again they're free units unlike the frogs even worse, uh, if we have the matchup where we have, even though we have a lot of light melee, but we'll have one or two mages that are counter units against frog as well. And that's when, again, in my boosts and my setup here, frogs do not do very well. Well, they will obliterate, uh, light, at least on auto fight, they will obliterate light melee for sure, but then they take heavy pounding from the mages uh, and you could see you would be losing like one, uh, one and a half uh, slots quite often uh, actually. So that's not, that's not great. So we will be using frogs here in a very limited fashion. So again, for this, for this lineup, we will be going with trends and they should do Really well here, yeah, as you can see, but again, that's the very first encounter still. Not where we're gonna go much faster afterwards once we uncover pretty much all setups. Okay, so that's again one of the lineups that uh, matchups that will repeat after province number nine. So let's talk about that briefly. Again, uh, basically the same answer as the previous one. Uh, you can use uh, either one of the three, you can use trends. But there's country unit here, so not amazing. 
You can use Valorians, they would do okay here because they do okay against mages, but they're not as great against light melee. So there's that. You can use uh, frogs here, and generally that's what I would use here. So they would do very well against uh, uh, light melee, uh, and they would do okay against single mage. Uh, but let's just see. Yeah, okay, in this case, but again, remember, this is the first uh, or win the first nine provinces, so it's not exactly representative, so they did really well here. And that's the matchup for the frogs. Yeah, you see, single uh, light melee, nothing else. Uh, frogs just eat them for breakfast, just like that, no, no losses whatsoever. And that's actually representative, you will see pretty much the same outcomes even much later in the tournament all right so that took us a while to get the number one province all right okay so again common common matchup here uh here we'll go with Cerberus. oh sorry no uh that's the one again no country units so we'll go with trends And okay, all right, so that's the Cerberus matchup. Uh, they are they only have one country unit, they're good against mages, and they're comparable against light melee. So, Cerberus, it is again anytime we use light melee or heavy melee, but especially light melee, we're gonna take losses. So, there's that. Okay, that's again our uh, mostly light melee setup and just one mage, so we'll go with frogs. All right. Okay. So again, that's not the matchup you will see past province number 10. So do whatever you have to do here. Uh, it's probably going to be Cerberus. Oops. Yeah, you see, not, not ideal. Even at number two. All right, again, that's the uh, heavy, heavy melee, and because there's a country unit, we'll go with Valorians. Not bad. Okay, uh, that's also a very common uh, setup around here. We have a lot of light melee. We have a little bit, or less uh, than that, of heavy range. And we have one or two country units, uh, which is mages in this case. So. Uh, I used to go with trance here uh, because again they're supposed to be somewhat better against light melee uh, but uh, later on uh, nowadays I actually go with Valorians here because as, as I showed you there's really not that much difference uh, in Valorians versus trance as far as light melee is concerned uh, Valorians do better uh, with country units uh, and they certainly do much better against heavy range. One would think that that would not be a bad setup for frogs, but again at that level at my and at my boost, uh, frogs would not do well here. As I said, they would do really well against light melee. They would already not do particularly well against heavy range and yeah, mages would not go well for them. So in this matchup, where it's clearly a heavy melee preference, I go with Valorians because of the country unit presence. And as you can see in this case, that worked really well. We'll see of course more losses like that. Again, the same setup, uh, mostly light melee, uh, a little bit of heavy range and country unit, so Valorians. So far losses are, yeah, that's that's probably the most common setup, give or take plus one or two uh, mages or one or two uh, heavy range. All right. So that's our Cerberus setup. So we have one weak and one comparable uh, as an opponent. So that's not bad. Oops. 
Okay, so no country units here, so we'll go with trends. So they're strong against every one of them, and that went relatively well. Okay, that's our Valorian setup. They're much better against heavy range. Still took some losses. But that's kind of things that we will see. Okay, so you see we have two country units here. Uh, and that's our Valorian setup. We'll take some losses, but again, even against two country units, they do fairly well here. But yeah, usually that would not be a, one of the best matchups. You will be taking some losses here. All right, country unit present, Valorians. Not bad. Again, mage in there, Valorians. Yeah, uh, I flipped very quickly, but yeah, we see more losses this time around. Okay, no country units here, and more in the lab, and uh, heavy range, trance. So in this circumstance, they do fairly well. Again, just, just to, uh, uh, to mention, like at that stage, the trance in these matchups would probably do fairly comparable to Valorians. But I just can't bring myself to actually build trance in the barracks because, uh, yeah, I don't really build any barrack units in barracks. Uh, I only get them for free. Uh, the only exception is golems uh, because they're clearly better in many matchups than everything else in the heavy range. I can't say the same about uh, about any other units from the barracks at that stage of the game, uh, even trans, uh, who are probably the second best unit there for me. Uh, they are, yeah, I can't think of any or at least many matchups where they would do better, at least in measurable terms, than Valorians. So I will just rather produce Valorians than I have to produce them. All right, yep, took some losses. Okay. What do we have here? That's our server setup. Two mages, one light melee, so one week, sorry, two weeks, one comparable. Uh, took some losses there. Okay, that's our frog setup. Only light melee, that's a great matchup. And even then, you see, we're starting to take some losses. Uh, yeah, that's the thing with frogs. Uh, they will probably get better later on uh, if you have or when you have more damage boost and more health. But until then, uh, yeah, not not that amazing outside of pure light melee. Okay, that's uh, not the greatest matchup because there's a lot of country unit proportionally. But again, Valorians will do quite okay here. As you can see, one with two mages. That's like 40% of all the opponents. Uh, Valorians do quite all right, even though they're supposed to be weak against. Uh, okay, that's another matchup which you, uh, I think you will see. Uh, okay, so there are, uh, sorry, yeah, this one, I'll probably go with uh, Cerberus, which does okay here. Okay, so all right, Cerberus again, not the matchup that we will see as far as I remember. Yep. Okay, no country units, so trans. And they did alright. Okay, so that's the scenario where we will begrudgingly go with frogs. And yeah, you see, that's what I was talking about. Even though there was like four melee, light melee, that's uh, very, like, frogs are excellent against, and only one mage, uh, we've blown through more than a single slot, more than 20% losses on the frogs. Uh, that's not uncommon scenario, uh, but look at the difference than the no country units and only light melee. Boom, 
pretty much no losses. That's the difference of a single country unit. So frogs, frogs are very tactical unit, uh, very specialized unit. Again, at least at that stage of the game, they used to be very, uh, well, very universal unit. Could have gone with them against just about anything else uh, with high enough uh, boosts, but not anymore. That was the nerf. All right, so let's see what we have here. Uh, that Cerberus, as there are no country units for them there. Okay, yeah, that's in this scenario, yeah, you could go with Valorians, but in this circumstance, I usually go with Banshees. Again, that's not the matchup that will repeat after province number nine. So that's only here because take a look at that plus 90% and minus 80% damage taken from those. Yeah, against pure uh, light, sorry, light heavy range, doesn't get much better than that. And there's that. Okay, yep, no country units, trans. And they did very well. All right, so. Okay, country units present, so we go with Valorians. Again, two country units present, Valorians, even though most of that, that's light melee. And you see, they do very well here. So again, two country units, Valorians. It's not as intuitive based on purely uh, what they're supposed to be strong or weak against. Uh, but yeah, that's that's how it works. So you can see, yeah, again, single country unit, they did even better. Okay, so, all right, so we are out of the first nine provinces. So now all the matchups that we'll see starting from province number 10, that will be uh, the matchups that you will see uh, anywhere from 10 upwards to 50, 60, 70, and whatnot. So we got rid of all the junky matchups. Okay, so that's another interesting matchup. Uh, it's not very frequent, but it certainly does show up uh, at 10 plus. Uh, that's not in a great matchup right now. So basically you can go like that with uh, some mage units here, uh, Banshees in this particular case, because they're good against heavy range. Again, with the boost that I have right now, uh, that's not gonna be great. You will take, or I will take in this case, uh, quite noticeable losses. So another option is to go with rangers like that. They, 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 they will kill all the mages. They are excellent against mages. Uh, but incidentally, here we have uh, the dudes who are really strong against light range. And it will show. Uh, they will take... I mean, our rangers will take quite a few losses as well. So actually, in these circumstances, we can go with another option, uh, which is Cerberus. So Cerberus are good against mage. Uh, let's take a look. So they have plus 70, minus 40, which is not too bad. I mean, it's not amazing. They have very short attack range, but they have very good movement range. And more importantly, they have a three strike back. So they do well against mages, I mean, not as well as uh, rangers for sure, but they do okay. But the thing is, they are a lot better uh, holding up against uh, the stainlings. So while the stainlings are also not too bad against light melee, technically speaking, uh, look at that. Okay, so they have some damage. Uh, increase against Cerberus, but they have no damage decrease. So once Cerberus uh, start hitting them, and with extra damage boost that we have in forms of the Fire Phoenix and whatnot, uh, they would actually melt reasonably well. Having said that, we will sti still see quite a bit of losses here, 
But uh, given these three alternatives, uh, Cerberus, uh, Rangers, and Banshees, again, in this setup and with these uh, boosters that I have, you really, I mean, Cerberus are actually a better deal. Now, that would actually change in all likelihood if you have or if you can afford to field some of the damage boosts for mages or uh, light range. So if you put extra ELR or MMMM out, then the chances are that light range like rangers or benches are going to be better in this matchup because, well, servers are not going to get better, they have no extra boosts available. Uh, and in all likelihood, the uh, rangers would be better ultimately because uh, yeah by the time those guys get to them uh, they will take care of most of them with the extra damage boost but benches would also work relatively well because they have no uh, units they against a weak against uh, they have four comparables which is not great and two units that they're excellent against so but i don't have extra damage boosts for either one of these so it actually uh, Cerberus for me and as you can see it did all right uh, but quite often you would still see in this matchup quite significant losses depending on the terrain most likely all right country unit present Valorian and did all right okay no country units trans and Okay, that's not a common matchup. Here we go with Cerberus, only one country unit here, two comparable and three weak. They do all right, but being melee, uh, we'll see some losses here. Uh, quite often that would be more than what you just saw, uh, but still it's not terrible. Okay, two country units, Valorians. Okay, still one country unit, Valorians again. Yeah, and you can see that like, sometimes you have more, uh, significantly more losses than in the same matchup in other cases. So, uh, terrain plays a big role. So yeah, that went quite a bit better. And again, there is a mage there, so we go with Valorians. And they did fairly well. Okay, that's another server setup. We have one unit they are, weak, uh, they are strong against and one comparable. So that's all right. Again, no country units, trans. Okay, yeah, that's one of these two country units and not much, uh, not that much everything else, but two heavy ranges, so uh, Valorians do quite all right here, even despite two mages. Again, two mages there, but a lot more other things. We go with Valorians again, and they did okay. All right, country unit Valorians. Another country unit present Valorians again. No country units trans. Oh, two country units Valorians. We'll be using a lot of Valorians here. Another good thing about Valorians that you can produce them for free. Well, sort of for free at the cost of space only, uh, but not time. Uh, because Valorians Valors. Uh, this accent, they have quite a few. Uh, actually, not as many for Valorians. I think I have uh, six of them. Yeah. 
the country tolerance and that helps a lot to build up the, the numbers I, I love those buildings uh, no country needs trans not as useful as uh, grounds of orc strategists simply because the orc strategists require actual orcs to produce and valorians do not so i have a lot more uh, grounds of orc strategists than valorian swellers okay no country units trans Okay, so that's our Cerberus setup. Uh, you never want to have more than two country units. Well, almost never want to have more than two country units. Uh, in the encounters, you want to pick something else. Okay, that's a Valorian setup. There. There are some circumstances that you uh, may want to use. A, a unit even with three counter units in the enemy might shop, but uh, at very specific circumstances and I don't think there are any in this tournament. Okay, so this one, uh, I already mentioned the sketchy setup. Uh, I go with Frog Prince here, even though... Uh, yeah, you see this time it did very well, but sometimes, as you've seen it before already, you can lose like the whole slot, 20% uh, plus, just like that. Okay, the country units, Valorians. And now that's an excellent matchup for frogs. Did we get any? Well, we did get some losses. I mean, not really. Okay, Cerberus. One weak unit, one comparable against. And you see, even then, we did take quite a bit of losses there. So it wasn't great. Probably terrain didn't work very well. Uh, no country units, trans. Okay, so we're getting close to our number 20. Country unit, Lawrence. Two country units, more Valorants. And basically the same matchup, so how about more Valorants? And you see they keep doing fairly well. They do, do take maybe about 10% uh, or up to 10% losses. That's probably a bit more than that, probably closer to 20 uh, so 10, 10 to 20 percent losses from uh, encounters with one or two country units. That's actually pretty good. All right, yeah, that's that's this sketchy matchup, which where I go Cerberus. But if you have any boost for light range or banshees or mages, uh, chances are you may want to go either one of these because, yeah, Cerberus is... Yeah, this time around they did alright, so 20-ish percent losses. Uh, but yeah, you could see quite a bit more than that. Alright, so Valorians. That's our Cerberus matchup, three weak, two comparables, one counter. Okay, performance. No, no country units. Trends. You do all right there. And 19. Okay, servers again. Not too bad. No country units. Trends. Acceptable. Okay, that's sketchy matchup for frogs. Yeah. I mean, we won't really do better with other unit types right now. Okay, Cerberus again. 
Yep, about 20%. Okay, and here's our province number 20. At Cerberus, the mage is too late melee. And one heavy range. Yeah, as you can see, losses can be significant. And snow country units did all right. Frogs, eh. Oh, did it actually very well this time around. Okay, that's our Cerberus matchup. Yep, you see about 20% out on each matchup like that. Okay, so we finally hit 20. Now let's check what our losses are. Over that period, okay. Uh, that's not too bad. We've lost uh, 29 squads so far. So remember, that's uh, two stars, uh, provinces 1 to 20. Uh, that's not too bad. That's, I mean, in all fairness, that's. Pretty much what I expected given my previous tournament runs. Uh, so that's that. Uh, at that point in time, you probably have seen most of the matchups. So I'll make a cut here and uh, I'll re uh, record the rest of the two stars. So 21 to 50 uh, with cutoffs at each. Uh, 10 province points just to see how many losses did we sustain. Uh, and you can check it out if you want to, uh, to see more matchups, more different losses uh, that you may experience in particular matchups, and the total numbers. So with that, uh, I'll make a cut here, and I'll see you either in the part 2 of that, uh, or maybe in the next tournament uh, tutorial. So see you then.